players healthy, but the depth is all there to keep the line moving, and Notre Dame has done it through the first month. They're hopeful the health will take care of itself over the coming weeks and months. They're hoping to take care of Lafayette tonight as they get this one underway, and Notre Dame wasting no time getting Maddie Westbelt inside. She pivots, comes up short. You look at the starters coming up here for Lafayette as Antonoli leads the attack. Favors hands off to Haley Smith, their second leading scorer. Trying to find space inside, dangerous cross court pass. Favors running low on time, pivots on Hidalgo, puts one up right at the end of the shot clock. Irish happy with their defense on that possession. Their name has been primarily an offensive team this year, averaging over 90 points a game. It's Hannah Hidalgo, who's been a key fixture for the Irish as a true freshman, drives but can't finish. There you see some of that leadership early from Antonoli calling the shots offensively. This Lafayette offense is well balanced. We talked about her as the leader up front, but Lafayette can get balanced scoring and a big night from anyone at any point, really. Three-pointer from Favors there, well off the mark. Lafayette offense as a whole has struggled a bit this year. One of the bottom units in the country as we get our first points of the night. And an one opportunity all in one as Kylie Watson spins and scores. Watson's been taking big strides forward for Notre Dame this year in her senior season at the forward position. And Notre Dame's ability to get involved, make things happen on the inside is going to be key. Lafayette was burned, especially in the rebounding category last time out in the loss at Rutgers. Notre Dame will keep the trend, look to keep that trend alive here tonight. Irish fourth in the ACC in rebounds this year, so certainly well equipped on paper to take advantage of that. And talking with Lafayette's coach, Kia Damon Olson, before the game as Lafayette gets inside and gets their first points of the night. That was Michaela Andrews laying that one up and in. But she said with the injuries that Notre Dame has had, as Westbelt spins one off the rim, that you know, they've lost some key pieces, certainly, and they'll be happy when they return, but they've actually gotten a bit bigger as a result of some of those injuries, and that's created new challenges for teams facing them. Yeah, that's an interesting point as well. And Coach Damon also talked specifically about trying to cut down the offensive rebounding from the opposition. Scarlet Knights really shine in that category, and she wants to see that deficit at least cut in half. And you know, even as Notre Dame comes in a lot bigger than usually they would present, goal doesn't change for Coach Damon Olsen in this Leopard squad. Turn over there by the Leopards, and Notre Dame looks to take advantage. That three off the mark. Good hustle, though, by Watson on the offensive glass. Watson tries to put up a runner. It's blocked. This belt will stay with it, though. Time for the Irish to shoot. Watson not taking it, somehow gets that right-handed hook to fall. As you get a look at the Notre Dame starting lineup. As you mentioned, at least two starters for Notre Dame went healthy. Sonia Citron and Olivia Miles are out. Sandra uh, San Prosper also plays a big role for this Irish team as well. She's heard as is Jenna Brown, but you know, basically a third of the roster is out to an injury right now. The Irish still playing very well to start this year, especially in terms of record. They look to get in transition here. Hidalgo drives, can't finish, but gets the foul. Notre Dame looking to run right there, and Hannah Hidalgo, certainly a player that can spark things in the transition game for Notre Dame. Been such a dynamic player, and you know, we're still waiting to see how things will look like when Notre Dame gets its full capacity back on the court with Olivia Miles and how Hidalgo will fit into that equation running the point as a freshman, but she's done it about as effectively as one can imagine. And even as her production, at least scoring-wise, has dwindled a little bit from its massive averages through the first few weeks, other players, teammates have come in, stepped up to pick her up, and it's helped Notre Dame win games as we talked about. First Hidalgo free throw is good. Nat Marshall, whom we highlighted in the intro, checks in for the first time. And I am Matthews in for Lafayette as well. Hidalgo goes two for two, and it's a 7-2 lead for Notre Dame, just over three minutes in. Irish a perfect 2-0 at home this year. This game begins a 
Nice three-game homestand for them. Irish won't play a road game until New Year's Eve against Syracuse. It was a nice finish inside there by Michaela Andrews. It's Lafayette back on the board. This is a, a nice test, at least scheduling-wise, for both teams. Notre Dame sees the schedule really start to thin out, especially as opposed to last year. You know, this is getting into finals week for Coach Ivy and her student athletes. So, looking to take advantage of the opportunity tonight, going into a, a thinner schedule on the Lafayette side. You have a one-off conference game to get that area of league play started against Monmouth next week. Yeah, these two teams were actually supposed to play it last year in Lafayette as part of a home and home. The game was canceled due to health and safety reasons on the Leopards side. So the Irish will travel to Easton next year. We get a foul on Notre Dame. Yeah, that's Marshall checking into the game for the first time tonight. And again, spotlighted her in the open. 15 points, nine rebounds. Making things happen in the paint at Tennessee last week as Coach Ivy's calling something out from the bench, trying to get her players ready to go and hold this five-point lead. And that rebounding prowess, especially in Port Notre Dame, losing one of their top rebounders last year, Lauren Ebo, who was a grad transfer to the program. Trying to pick up the slack as Soto Nacho Nagizni gets inside and puts up two. And Lafayette's really having success early on. Passing off and finding, cutting players toward the basket from the block and the elbow on the edges of the paint. It's worked out and that turns it into two. Westbound hangs and hits from just inside the free throw line. First points of the night for the senior forward from Kettering, Ohio. Hidalgo looking to poach and instead commits a foul. Hidalgo never hesitant to get her hands involved and look to run coming back the other way. Just two games into her collegiate career, she tied the Notre Dame all-time single game record for steals with 12. So it's a major part of what she takes pride in, the way she plays her game, the defensive side of the basketball. She's averaging six a game, which is tops in the country as a contested shot falls there from Anaya Matthews. Hidalgo already so steady for this Irish team. Even as a freshman, she gets open from three here and winds up a bit too long. And that's one of the big storylines from that Tennessee game. Irish did a lot of things right in that game, but they were 0 for 9 from beyond the arc. And they're going up against the Lafayette team who defends the three extremely well. Putting shooting just over 26% from beyond the arc against them as the Leopards turn it over for the second time in this opening quarter. We'll step aside for a brief moment here at Purcell Pavilion. Good one going so far between Notre Dame and Lafayette. Look at Lafayette head coach Kia Damon Olson, her seventh season leading the Leopards. Some ups and some downs throughout that time as well, but has Lafayette off to a solid start this year, especially given that six of their first eight games, now seven of nine, have been on the road. Yeah, and she's familiar with leading a team into a Big environment like Notre Dame. It was great talking with her today and hearing what she had to say about the opportunity to, to come and play here. And she's got a great feel for how her team can grow in spots like this, facing the 14th ranked team in the country. And she's ready to lead them tonight. Maddie Westbelt off a nice feed inside, puts that one up and in. And Lafayette's already played two schools from major conferences, started the year at Syracuse, then took on Rutgers in their last contest. As Westbell with some nice hands, can't come away with the steal though. Never's defense is a good job to reset quickly. Matthews provides the screen. Andrews looks for space, is forced to kick out. They go around for a three pointer that's blocked and then left available, but shot clock expires. How about Becky Obimna, the graduate? Coming up with the block there, she's got excellent reach in at six foot two and recognized that on that last pass around the perimeter, Lafayette was gonna have to fire one up and she was in perfect position. There it is, rising up at the perfect time, getting her right hand in the air and 
turning possession back over to Notre Dame. Instant impact off the bench from Obinma. Yeah, graduate transfer from Pepperdine, who's only played in two games so far this year. I just used just two players off the bench in that Tennessee game. It was Nat Marshall and Emma Risch. Getting action and Coach Ivy expanding the rotation a little bit here. Official shaking something at the table here, maybe just making sure the clock is correct. With some commotion there with the shot clock expiring. Though it looks like Notre Dame's gonna take the ball ahead and now both teams are being told to return to their benches. So apparently a foul earlier in this game was called against someone that the officials are believing was incorrect. So that's the reason for the stoppage and trying to make sure that the fouls are assessed correctly. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how long this takes to go back and check on. Not exactly sure when the play in question happened. But yeah, here we are, 3.43 to go, and we'll have a little bit of time to talk things over as the officials are here, waiting for confirmation on this correction. Well, some coaches might be phased by a weird stoppage like this, but Neil Ivey has seen just about everything. Her fourth season as head coach in Notre Dame, but her experience here and in basketball obviously goes way back. You see 12 years as an assistant under Muffet McGraw, was also a player for this Notre Dame team for four years just over two decades ago and already making her stamp on this program, which certainly isn't something that's easy to do when you're talking about taking over and the, replacing a legendary head coach, of course, in Muffin McGraw. And I mean, that's just half the equation for what Neil Ivey has come in here and tried to do at Notre Dame. She certainly knows how to adjust. Her first season was that 2020, 2021 COVID year, and she's found a way to build this program back up, put it on a national stage once again, and. What a great opportunity she'll have to, as I'm sure a large crowd of Notre Dame fans will next Sunday, honor Muffet McGraw with the statue unveiling against Purdue next week. Ivy said she is thrilled to be around and get to see one of her idols and mentors honor in such a way. And well, that Muffet gets to be there, obviously, and enjoy it and see it herself. Some iconic coach statues on this campus, as this ball will stay with Lafayette. Mostly honoring football coaches like Frank Leahy and Newt Rockney. Muffin McGraw certainly among those names of Notre Dame coaching greats and an outstanding recipient to be the first woman honored by a statue on Notre Dame's campus. Tough turnaround shot rims out there from Andrews. Hidalgo looks to push the pace. Marshall settles at the free throw line and she sinks the shot. And she scored like that a few times last week at Tennessee and over the last few weeks with her multiple double digit performances as well. It's not just second chance opportunities and cleaning up for Marshall. She can hit from the elbow and she shows it off right there. Notre Dame is ahead seven. Irish offense has gone hot as of late. They made five of their last six field goal tries. Andrews trying to end a scoring drought for Lafayette. Winds up drawing a foul. KK Bransford made the All-ACC freshman team last year. Very highly coveted recruit. Averaging almost 10 points a game in her sophomore season. She comes back in. Hunter Nagisney moves it inside. That one rims out again from Andrews, and Hidalgo's there for the rebound. Hidalgo moves it over to Bransford. Marshall with the extra pass inside. This time it's hauled in by Obimba, and she puts it up and in. Yeah, good quick movement by Notre Dame. Lafayette a little bit wary of Marshall's ability to shoot. This time from the right elbow, caved in towards her, and with a quick touch pass she found Obinna underneath. 6-0 Irish run since the TV timeout. Good hands from Westfeld there. Leopards will keep possession. As Kylie Watson returns to the lineup, replacing Obinna. Hey, 
Hey, Donahue gets her first action of the night. She'll inbound here. And is Smith looking for space? Quickly hands off for Drummond. Open jump shot is pure from Donahue, making an instant impact, coming right off the bench and tacking on a couple points. Lafayette's just going to have to keep moving right now. Things haven't worked out well for them, just moving the ball around stationary on the perimeter. But when players get in motion and they move it outside in, we've seen it set up a couple drives inside the lane and then a jumper that succeeds there. There's another jumper that falls. Matt Westbeld once again, she's off to a hot start. Yeah, Westbeld and Watson have been the go-tos for Notre Dame. Six for Westbeld, five for Watson. Westbeld was tied with Nat Marshall for Notre Dame's leading story against the Volunteers with 15 points. Final minute now of this first quarter. Space opens up and Tanoli misses a three offensive rebound put back, but it rims out from Drummond. Those the opportunities that Lafayette knows they need to take advantage of, but we're gonna go the other way here. Travel call against Hidalgo, and so a two for one opportunity for Lafayette if they choose to hurry. We get a foul away from the ball here. It's going against Westbeld. It's the fourth team foul on Notre Dame in this opening quarter. Bounded up high to Smith. Dangerous pass there with Watson getting aggressive. Fayette has struggled in the turnover margin there. Ninth out of 10 teams in the Patriot League in that department. Irish were outstanding against Tennessee in that area as Hidalgo comes away with her first swipe of the game. Took away an inside pass for Drummond. Rise to lead Bransford ahead. She almost lost the handle. Keeps it alive, Irish. They'll play for the last shot here. They've got four seconds to work with. And a baseball pass inside from Hidalgo goes too high. And that was a heat-seeking missile right there from Hidalgo. Tremendous play on her part to open up the offensive chance as that one catches the back of the iron. But Notre Dame takes the lead early. Spending their Wednesday night with us here at Purcell Pavilion. Love to see it. Well, we know Marcus Freeman has made it a priority himself to see all Notre Dame sports offerings from basketball to hockey to volleyball. His players heeding that message as a three from the top of the key falls from Haley Smith. That's the first three of the game for either side. They hadn't been 0 for 5 combined in those opening 10 minutes. Marshall, that's looking like her signature shot right now. Another one from the free throw line for Nat Marshall, who's picked up right where she's left off. Yeah, she's found that soft spot, and she can get going like she did in Knoxville last week. Lafayette's going to have a lot to deal with, but on the other side, you saw Haley Smith pour in the three. She's the best three-point shooter on this Leopard squad. Yeah, one of the rare players is actually slightly better from three than she is overall from the field, 46% from beyond the arc. Bransford tries to get downhill, skips it to Marshall. In tight quarters, Bransford on the move, puts it in with the right hand. That's just a determined finish right there between Marshall and Bransford. There were several opportunities to kick one out, maybe fire up a three, but 14 and 15 wanted that one badly, even as the ball careened around and they found it. Almost a miscommunication, a good job by Antonoli to save that with DeWolf pestering. And off, Nacho Nagizny sends it over. Smith looking for another three-pointer, and she knocks it down. Two pure threes from Haley Smith, and Lafayette keeps this at a single-digit game. Smith, even when she's not scoring, can impact this Lafayette team and its cohesion in so many ways. Coach Damon Olsen called her the glue player for this Leopard team. Westbound threw that one into a lot of bodies, and somehow Watson was able to come away with the foul call there. And Hidalgo returns to the floor for Notre Dame to inbound. Freshman from Hadfield, New Jersey, has already won the ACC's Rookie of the Week Award three times on the season. 
basically 50% of the time she's been honored in that area, and she goes up hard for a rebound here and draws another whistle. This will go against Emma Shields. And Hidalgo trying to impact the game in as many ways as possible. Yeah, you mentioned the hot start. Three different ACC Rookie of the Week selections, and you know, that award has moved away from her the last couple of weeks, but hasn't changed a thing for Notre Dame. She's called for her second travel of this night so far. Is coming off probably her weakest collegiate game. Now, that being said, she still had 13 points against Tennessee, but five for, 15, five for 17 from the field in that game. Missed both of her three-point tries. But it says something about how good of a player you are when that's considered an off night. Yeah, you'll take that, no doubt, especially as a first-year player. Are you kidding me? Good read by Anna DeWolf. She looks for her first points of the night. Finishes strong. Those are the type of plays that Coach Damon Olsen said that Lafayette has to limit. Cannot let Notre Dame attack in transition because they're almost impossible to stop in those areas. And you talked about Notre Dame's ability to win that game in Tennessee last week despite not making a single three-pointer. And a big reason for that was the turnover advantage the Irish developed throughout the night. 17-7. Irish plus seven per game on average this year. That's third best in the ACC. And they get a block here from Watson. And it is going to be Notre Dame's ball. The Irish protecting the house already. A couple of blocks tonight. Someone on the perimeter earlier from Obimba and now Watson inside. J.K. Bransford gets some space. Rims out of three. Even though the Irish went 0 for 9 in that game against Tennessee, Coach Ivy said she still liked the team's shot selection from three-point range. She didn't even realize until after the game had ended they hadn't made a single shot from beyond the arc. And so that she expects that they'll be back towards that season average of about six main threes tier tonight. They're still in search of their first one, though. Offense has mostly been clicking as Bransford upset with the foul call there. She kind of sneak in for an offensive board. That's the second foul, or first foul, excuse me, on Bransford. Got Marshall back in. Actually, was Bransford's second foul. Had it right the first time. He favors over to Abby Antonoli, still looking for her first points of this night. Favors gets inside, makes the pass down low. Shields back into the corner. Three point attempt is down. Off the end is three for three from three in this quarter. As Kylie Favors, almost 40% from beyond the arc this year, knocks it down, brings us back to a six point game. Westbelt inside, she coughs it up. Leopards hanging around, but Anna DeWolf is pestering and gets the steal. Hidalgo cannot capitalize though. Fast pace to this one, Lafayette with numbers for a brief moment as Hidalgo hustles back. Shields in size, does not have the size advantage on Watson, so she kicks out. Oh, and Aaron oh. skip pass there, miscommunication with Drummond. Two on one the other way, Westbelt calls her own number, finishes and the foul. Notre Dame sure needed that to settle down that rising pace you talked about between these two teams, a little bit of sloppy basketball, inability to finish on Notre Dame's end, but then Westbeld takes the hack, puts it in herself, as you said, called her own number, and yep, she's all business about it, going to the line with a chance for three. Big basket there to kind of quell some of the momentum the Leopards had going, and you've seen at times this year the Irish be not quite as sharp as you maybe expect on layup opportunities, and that one, not a routine one through contact, but Westbeld's still able to finish. Antonoli gets inside, cannot get on the board though. Contested jumper a little bit wide right. Hidalgo fires it to the corner, DeWolf for three, well short. And Hidalgo, as you've seen in this game, will go to whatever lengths need to be taken to get the ball where it needs to go. As Antonoli comes up short on three, Hidalgo's running in transition, she will take it herself, score it, and the foul. 
Another and one opportunity for the Irish as they're getting those transition champs as Lafayette knew they needed to limit. That's a big score right there for Hidalgo. Off to a one for five start from the floor. Struggling to finish on those 1v1 drives, but that time she just leans in, draws the block, and cashes in for two as she went up against Favors and won the battle. Already six fast break points for the Irish in this game. They had 10 the entirety of the Tennessee contest. We'll get a timeout on the floor here. Halfway through the second corner, Hannah Hidalgo and the Irish turning good defense into good offense, and they lead by 11. At Amica, we know what Back here in South Bend, you get a look at this Lafayette Collegiate Program profile. If you're not familiar, it's a private liberal arts school in Easton, Pennsylvania. Just under 3,000 undergraduates and over 20 D1 sports teams with some noble alumni, of course, ESPN, acclaimed commentator Beth Mowens, World Series main manager Joe Madden, and this Lafayette program off to a solid start this year in 2023. Yeah, great to see them have a chance to match up with Notre Dame after the matchup fell through due to some health concerns last season. Notre Dame will travel to Easton next year for the second leg of that home and away. Well, a big part of the reason why Notre Dame wanted to schedule this matchup is because Notre Dame has a lot of players from nearby at Lafayette's campus. None closer than Olivia Miles, who Coach David Olson said literally is a stone's throw away. But this basket will not count here from Antonoli as a travel negates potential two points. But Miles just a few moments away. Some other players nearby as well. Kylie Watson. And Hidalgo a few hours away. KK Bransford not too far as well. Or, excuse me, Sonia Citron, beg your pardon. This one is out of bounds off West Belt. Lafayette obviously recruits heavily in that area as well, but they've also got some players from far away as well. Player from Australia and Grace Montgomery. Two players from Canada too. So certainly not afraid to expand their horizons. They come to South Bend here for the first time. Tough scoop shot there on the run. He is rejected. The rebound is nicely pulled in. But another block is all that comes from it. Quick up from Westbell. DeWolf with the jumper. Doesn't get it to fall. Tip try, no good as well. Leopards have hung tough in this game. This 11 point lead is Notre Dame's largest and it finally sinks on the first basket of the night from Amy Antonoli. Long awaited, but she hits a tough shot from the baseline to bring it back to nine. And that ends a nearly three minute scoring drought there for Lafayette. Antonoli, big one to get her going. A quick release from the baseline. Skip to the corner. Westbell too strong from three. Leopard certainly doing a nice job in this contest at limiting some of the things that Notre Dame wanted to do. This is going to be a turnover here and an unforced one as that pass just went right through the hands of Haley Smith. And that's one of the things that Lafayette didn't want to do. And they had a couple of those miscommunication and sloppy turnovers that they know they really can't afford. Yeah, and again, Notre Dame has yet to hit a three-pointer. 0 for 5 to start, and that's largely what's keeping Lafayette around here. In addition to the fact that the Leopards have not turned it over much more than Notre Dame. It's now 9-6, Leopards with nine turnovers, Irish with six, and gotta keep that margin close. Hidalgo finally ends the drought. A much needed three for this Notre Dame roster, and Hidalgo, 45% from beyond the arc this year, is the one to get it. Aggressive here, looking for the steal. Hannah Hidalgo with a quick burst to the basket. Five straight from the freshman. And it causes a Leopards timeout as well. Now the quick hands from Hidalgo on that sequence. Took one slap, took a couple more slaps at it, and finally had it poked free and was coming back the other way. And he set it five points in a row. Notre Dame opened up that deficit. There you go, right hand, left hand, and she's off to the races. No chance for Antonoli to track her down. So explosive, turning defense into offense. And it gets the lay in to go, and Notre Dame feeling a little bit better now as halftime approaches. 
Yeah, that three-pointer she made just before that steal as well was earning his first since November 24th. And we're talking about so often for players who are struggling that sometimes they just need to see one go in to turn the tides. Maybe that'll be the case for Notre Dame as a team from three-point range. Yeah, Neil Ivey, you mentioned her kind of disbelief of that stat last year. And she still feels like Notre Dame shooting the ball well. There's nothing structurally, foundationally that needs to change with the outside offense. But you mentioned it, seeing one go in and just having that feeling, having that momentum turn back in your favor can really help. Well, Bimbo whistled for the foul here, and Ivy said that even though they're without some key pieces, it hasn't really changed the team's structure that much. She said the one tweak they've made is they played a bit more zone defense lately, just to try to limit fouls with obviously the smaller rotation, but in terms of their game plan and how they attack, that it really has been more of the same, and just relying on the players who are called to take on bigger roles to step up, and so far that's been the case for Notre Dame. Their lead of 14 right now is a game high, but it shrinks on the shot from Andrews. Who hits that one through traffic. And DeWolf tries to turn the corner. Too short on the lefty shot. As they move under two minutes here in this opening half. Abby Antonoli just one for five so far from the field in this game. And just off the mark there on a three. She's now 0 for 4 from beyond the arc as well. Lafayette had that big burst of three straight threes early in this quarter, but shooting from beyond the arc has been a struggle for them outside of that as Notre Dame gets a second chance basket. There's Obinma again coming in off the bench, having an impact, two for two from the field with a couple rebounds to start. Matthews swings it out. Antonoli tries to put the move on. DeWolf throws it out for a three. That's off the mark. DeWolf grabs it back. Hidalgo in the corner. Thought about the quick three. See how the Irish manage the shot clock in this situation. Watson goes right to the rim and winds up drawing a whistle. Nicely oh. done by Notre Dame, too. Move the ball laterally there. Find Hidalgo and ultimately set up Watson with a one-on-one -on -one chance to back down Matthews. And she makes her way back to the line trying to build on an early five points. It's actually called a shooting foul, so that's the reason we're there, I believe. She gets one more. And splits them. Upper's down 15 here, 41 seconds to go. They were in a similar spot late in the first quarter, opting not to go for the two for one. See if that approach holds consistent here. Looks like it will. Antonoli to Chasha Chudi. Hidalgo once again with the quick hands, comes away with it. Hidalgo's gonna take it from three and it's off the mark, but Marshall's right there for it. Marshall spins but can't get it back up cleanly. And it's Lafayette who will end up with a chance for last shot, but they go aggressive here. Antonoli now slows things down. Leopard's trying to get some momentum here going into the break. Antonoli down low. Tough shot from the baseline is too strong. Well, on the release from Michaela Andrews, and it's a 15-point lead. For that changes it all in the final 20. Irish also up 9-0 in fast break points as well in this game, which was the big defensive key for the Leopards entering play. Ellie Watson tries to make a pass inside for Westbell, but she can't handle it. Lafayette gets an early takeaway, and Notre Dame, oh, it looked like they had done the same, but Westbell gets called for the whistle. That's Westbell's second foul of the night. No player on either side with more than two thus far, so. No major concerns in that area just yet. There's Abby Antonoli with it. Antonoli, a quiet first half. Struggled just one for six from the field. Gets an open look here, though, from the corner and sends a three long. 
Rebound carries right to Bransford. She looks to go in transition. Three on two for the Irish. DeWolf takes that pass. Westfield with a quick jumper, and she knocks it down. Great ball movement there out of transition there for Notre Dame, and Westfield hustling well to jump in on that play late and open up a jumper. And now Anna DeWolf will collect to add two more, and the steal and the score. And the Fordham transferred. And it's two more as we've seen DeWolf get involved defensively in this one. That's already her third steal. Time with Hidalgo for the game high. Hidalgo does a good job of staying tight with Andrews. Winds up getting a deflection there. Ball will stay with the Leopards. Another look at that. DeWolf steal and score as she reached out on the perimeter pass and took it all the way herself. You see a good look at it, coming right down Broadway and putting it home for two more. Notre Dame again scoring in transition to open up second half. And another turnover here by the Leopards, this time courtesy of an offensive foul. It's called against Kayla Drummond. Foul number two on her. Dangerous pass there, but it did get to Hidalgo, who fakes the pass and can't hit a tough hook shot, but does found, find Watson, who generates contact and will go to the line. Another tough play right there from Kylie Watson, who's starting to collect the boards herself. She now has five rebounds to go with six points. And two offensive boards as well to tie with Westbelt. This is that first free throw a bit long. Second one is good. Notre Dame has their lead in the 20s for the first time tonight. Now what do the Leopards need to do to bring this game back a bit? I think we need to see them start hitting those three pointers again as well. We've seen Antonoli go cold 0 for 5 for her, an early miss. But you know, Lafayette's still moving the ball around pretty well, but uh, there's the steal again. You gotta avoid trying to force it in when Hidalgo and DeWolf are there. Hidalgo jumps the pass, blows right by Antonoli and puts it home for an easy two. Four steals, 14 points for Hannon Hidalgo here early in the third. Irish ratchet up the pressure on defense though. Leopards do a good job to break it down. They take advantage of an open shot. Haley Smith with the jumper. It was well done by Lafayette right there. I mean, half the battle with keeping the ball away from steal situations. And Hidalgo and DeWolf as they get an and one there again. What a beautiful find from Westbelt and the finish from Watson, plus another and one opportunity. As you mentioned, Irish have done a good job getting to the free throw line in this game. This will be their 10th, and it comes off an absolutely perfect pass from the perimeter by Matty Westbelt. Yeah, high low game right there between two of the players that have really made it happen in the paint underneath the basket for Notre Dame tonight. And Watson makes it three. Notre Dame off to a hot start in this third quarter. And they get a near takeaway. It's gonna be whistled a jump ball. Possession arrow does favor the Leopards. The main two run through 245. Coming out of the halftime break. It's great help right there from Watson as Hidalgo allowed Antonoli to turn the corner on her just a little bit, but Watson, who's been the MVP of the second half so far, makes another key play for the Irish. Favors watched by DeWolf. Extra pass to the corner, Antonoli at the shot clock buzzer, too strong. Now it's DeWolf off to the races, skips it over for the layup in transition, Kylie Watson again. And the Irish having fun, now doubling up the Leopards here in the third. Antonoli tries to drive in here, she's fouled by Hidalgo. Notre Dame sure did come up with three double figure scores pretty quickly, Hidalgo was already there at the break, but now Westfeld with 10, Watson with 12, as she has exploded out of the break with Six immediate points in the first three plus minutes. And again, Notre Dame getting on the run. Quick ball movement and finishing it off with two. 
Irish had four players in double figures in that Tennessee game. Three pointer here is off the mark. Good effort though on the rebound, but a contested shot is no good. And this will be off of Watson. Good effort down low there from Emma Shields to get the Leopards an extra possession. Yeah, Lafayette did a nice job forcing Watson a little bit out of position there with their movement on offense. Ended up being KK Bransford down there having to try and come up with the board. Tough break there for Lafayette as that one rims out from Andrews. Hidalgo with a bit of a Euro step. Got caught hanging there, couldn't hit the shot. Goes for a steal, Antonoli able to beat her to the outside, but Hidalgo just so quick there. Even after losing the gamble, she's able to recover and force Lafayette to kick out. They get Antonoli the ball through some screen action. Smith looks to drive and able to get that one to fall. Ellie Smith having a nice night, four for five, and she's the first leopard to double figures in this evening. Smith, one of those players that Lafayette talked about as Watson continues to be one of those players herself. It's like a broken record at this point as Kylie Watson just taking over in the paint. Another and one opportunity. Oh, for just, the senior forward from Linwood, New Jersey. We're just going to talk about Smith's ability to score when the leader, Antonoli, isn't always getting it done. How about Smith? Sure, Hidalgo has put up her usual results tonight with 14, but now Kylie Watson has leveled her with 14 of her own. And Notre Dame working a high-low game to perfection. Watson is creating positioning and paying dividends. They might like to get her the ball again here, though, after a nice rebound by Marshall. Watson does have it, finds Marshall. She gets the late foul call. That last basket by Watson officially gives her a new season high in points. Had 12 against NJIT. And now up to a game high, 14 on this night. That Marshall, 67% from the line this year to shoot two. Irish for such a good shooting team from the field and from three. Have struggled on free throws tonight, but they get another rebound here and another foul as well as Andrews with a bit of a hook on Watson, or Westbelt, excuse me. So I guess if you can't get it done the first time, just go right back and Notre Dame for as efficient as it's been to open up the second half, these first five minutes when the looks haven't dropped. Second chance opportunities have been plentiful as we just saw. Yeah, this will be five free throws in about five seconds as Westbell knocks down the first. Westbell 77% from the line going into the night. She drains two here. Andrews with the pick and roll set up for Antonoli. Irish have done a fantastic job containing her, averaging almost 15 points a game coming into this one. Doesn't matter here though, as Michaela Andrews picks up the slack with a jump from just beyond the paint. Marshall to DeWolf, left wing three is down. And DeWolf connects on a triple. Just the second three made tonight by the Irish, but they're hoping that they found their stroke a little bit from three-point range after the Ofer against the Volunteers. A near steal there instead of foul on West Bell. That'll be her third. And that'll send us to break. Notre Dame pulling away from the Leopards on the strength of their defense. They finish off the sequence with a triple from Anna DeWolf. Seems like there's a new star player each and every night for this Notre Dame team. A couple of days ago was Nat Marshall against Tennessee, and Kelly Watson's been at the center of the efforts tonight for Notre Dame, a game high 14 points. Yeah, she'll get a well-deserved rest as she came out firing on all cylinders to open up the second half. And has Notre Dame in position to nearly double up Lafayette. Couple basket and foul chances created from Kylie Watson in the early minutes, and. 
He's helped Notre Dame pull away. Watson got some decent minutes her first two years of her college career at Oregon, but became a full-time starter at Notre Dame last year. Is a nice pass inside here from Lafayette, but Dutra Nagisny unable to convert. But she really took on a bigger role for this Irish team upon transferring and thrived in it. As Hidalgo just misses that three. This is last touch by Lafayette. Through her first seven games with the Irish last year, she finished in double figures and scoring four times, which is the same amount that she did in two years with the Ducks. And has achieved that feat three times already this year as Hidalgo drains her second three of the night. And there it is, Notre Dame takes its lead into the 30s. Hidalgo continues to roll tonight with 17, her second make from outside. Breakdown off the trap for Notre Dame. Lafayette can't take advantage as Donahue just off on a three. And now Donahue's gonna be whistled for a foul here, trying to poke that loose ball away from Hidalgo. I'm sure some people wondered how she might respond after maybe a bit of an off performance against Tennessee and got off to a tough start in this one. Just one for five to begin, but since then, Hidalgo has looked like the dominant force we saw in Notre Dame's first half dozen games or so of the year. She's not gonna stay down for long. If you, if you can even call 13 points down, she's just such a dynamic player, impacts the game in too many ways and can create so many opportunities for herself. That's, that's the thing about Hidalgo. Her scoring output does not have to depend on the flow of the game or, or what's happening around her. Just with her ability to take the ball away, she can create many, so many chances on her own. Cold night for Antonoli continues as she's off on a three. Bransford in transition, pumps, and Antonoli makes up for it. Now both hands on that kick out pass. Now goes to work on offense. On a screen from Shields and slows things down. Lafayette offense, as we mentioned, has really struggled so far this year, averaging just 58 points a game. As a jumper here doesn't fall from Andrews, who's had a solid night, four for 10 from the field for her. But so this program has taken some steps forward already this year. Their most wins on the road in a single season under coach Damon Olson is five. They've already got three this season. And we're still in the first week of December. Yeah, a lot more of those opportunities will come when conference play starts to ramp up in the Patriot League. And for Lafayette to have these opportunities to go on the road, face some tough competition, and just find ways to grow no matter the result, that's, that's a big key for this balanced roster early on in the regular season. They were picked to finish eighth out of 10 teams in the conference. and. Definitely showed some signs early in this first half. There's potential for them to exceed that expectation. Certainly, this was a very tight game until late in the second quarter. As Lafayette was within six until the last couple minutes of that first half. The defense inside from Marshall. The Irish have found their stride in this one, no doubt about it. There's a foul on the Leopards inside. And really been that area, the dominance in the paint. It's actually going against Notre Dame, excuse me, but the point still stands. The Irish have been the superior team inside. That was an issue for Lafayette in their last game against Rutgers and has continued in this one. Yeah, we talked about off the top with these injuries, the rotation changes for Notre Dame, but it changes to benefit size. You get Watson more involved. You bring in Nat Marshall more frequently. K.K. Bransford can get involved at times underneath. And we've even seen Becky Obinma have an impact, especially defensively underneath. Throws one inside here, and then a kick out from Marshall gets picked off. Wow. Obinma with an emphatic block, her second of the night. Taking advantage of the opportunity. Now hands off for Hidalgo. Ball swiped from Bransford, it'll stay with the Irish. But Becky Obimba getting 
a chance to play for just the third time this year and making the most of the opportunity. Yeah, volleyball season ended just over two weeks ago here, but oh, Binma should have put a roof on that one. Look at this. Comes screaming in. The ball's not even out of the hands of Antonoli. And gets the basket as well off the inbounds. Obimba three for three from the field in this one. She's tied her season high with six points. And has Notre Dame even further in the driver's seat. Long range jumper from Donahue misfires. You can feel some of the tension from this crowd early in this game when the Irish weren't pulling away as quickly as expected. We've seen that earlier this season, Notre Dame. Got off to a tough start against Northwestern. Around 8 0 in that game right out of the gate. But this Irish team has found a way to turn it on when they've needed to every time so far this year. There's two more from Marshall and a nice rebound put back. And it has been more of the same so far in this one. Bank shot from Antonoli falls and. Good note for Lafayette to end this quarter, but it was all Irish. Such a big impact on this Lafayette squad as a whole because, I mean, she is a player that's very difficult to remove from the floor. She's the only player, period, that's played all 30 minutes tonight, but, I mean, can't necessarily come at much of a surprise with the way Notre Dame's defense can really lock players down, but it also shouldn't take away from what she's done so far this season. Antonoli still off to that tremendous start. Sure, this will hurt the averages a little bit, but and she's still out there with a smile on her face and just cherishing the opportunity to be out there with her teammates. And uh, hey, you never know, you got 10 more minutes of this thing. Why not turn it around right now and get yourself feeling good going into Monmouth? Yeah, double digits in six of uh, the eight games so far this year for the Leopards. She's played at least 40 minutes three times as well. So her impact on this team certainly is prevalent and certainly expect that this won't be the case going forward for her and the Leopards. Which is a testament to the defense, Notre Dame, which as we mentioned had been kind of middle of the road so far this year. Irish ninth in the ACC in points per game against so far this year, but Notre Dame showing that they can be suffocating when they need to be. And Hannah Hidalgo with four steals has certainly been a big part of that. Good contest there to force a miss. Irish held scored Lafayette 28 to eight in that third quarter, really putting their foot down. After Leopards hung with them until late in the second quarter, Maddie Westfeld for two more and a chance at a third. And that's been a familiar sight tonight for the Irish. Yeah, the three point play opportunities have really opened up throughout this second half. It was Watson to open up the final 20 minutes and now as Notre Dame again works it through Watson, Westfeld sees an opportunity to cut off to the side of the play, and she finds it on the run and cashes in. That's four fouls now on Haley Smith, so she'll check out for Shields. It is Shields with the ball here once again. Beavers with the handoff. Matthews looking for someone with this. Nowhere to go with the ball, really. Andrews tries to muscle inside. Tough shot, can't finish in close. It all go to Watson, who has been so good all night. A rare mishandle there. She points back with a smile. Talking about Antonelli's struggles in the night. Really, the theme, I think, one of the key stats for Lafayette in this game, they're just three for 13 from beyond the arc, and all three of those threes came in very short order. And as far as quantity goes, it's usually Antonelli that leads that charge, and you bring it up when her ability to score from distance disappears like it has tonight. That has a very widespread effect. Hidalgo, who's hit two threes, just misses that one. Chance for Antonoli to go on the attack quickly here. The Irish force her back, but finds an open teammate, and that three just rims out from Favors. 
Bransford with numbers and a lefty layup. Oh, great decision right there for Bransford. Two on one with Hidalgo flanking her on the right. Made a little dipsy-doo move to the right and then cut it back to the left side and that allowed her the positioning to finish for two. DeWolf tried to go for a crafty steal, winds up coming up short and her man, Favors, drains the three in turn. Favors has found herself with some space in that left corner. A couple looks early in this fourth quarter. Not to be, but that one finally does go through and Lafayette trying to turn the tides here offensively and generate some momentum to carry into the next one. Well, if we've seen anything from this Notre Dame team tonight, it's that we know they're going to be aggressive, for better or for worse. And it's burned them at times with some of the pressure they've tried to put on in the front court and came up there. But it's the way the Irish play. They're going to be aggressive, looking for steals and quick transition opportunities. And obviously, given the record and ranking, it's a formula that works more often than not. Westbelt kept that one in play, but put it right into a leopard. Favors tries to shovel that one out. It was deflected, so ball will stay on this side. Irish, as we mentioned, starting off a three-game homestand here. Two more non-conference games on it with Purdue and Western Michigan. They do have 11 days off, though, which is a nice break for them and a rare break from this. It's usually right around the time of year where they play UConn, but we're talking with Coach Ivy, she said, due to some logistical reasons. That game has been pushed back all the way to January 27th, and so after this game, their name won't play again until finals are in the rear view mirror, which I'm sure these players certainly don't mind. Yeah, and it's it's different too in that you don't have a standalone ACC game in the middle of December. Last year, Notre Dame had to go to Blacksburg to take a difficult Virginia Tech team on on the road the third Sunday of December. But this time for Notre Dame, it's not until New Year's Eve when conference play begins against Syracuse on the road. Yeah, you know, all non-conference on this home stand. Purdue on the 17th, Western Michigan on the 21st. That Purdue game, of course, will be the Muff McGraw statue unveiling. Okay, Donahue at the line for the Leopards. She drains the first. That is the first free throw attempt and make of the night for Lafayette. Hidalgo looked for an open pass, instead finds herself with space and drains the three. Welcome to the 20-point club once again, Hannah Hidalgo. That's what's going to happen when you give her that much time and space. And here she goes right in front of us looking for that steal again. Yeah, even in a game with a wide margin late in the fourth quarter, the motor for Hannah Hidalgo always on. So it makes her such a special player and has her college career off to such an amazing start. Irish fans saw Olivia Miles burst onto the scene a couple years ago, of course, and they have to be having some very positive flashbacks. Nice block down low there on the attempt by Bransford. I'm sure they're also looking ahead to the future, wondering what a backcourt of Hidalgo and Miles will look like when they team up at some point this year. I wonder who else will join them with the way Neil Ivey has recruited inside the top 100 during her Brief, but already very successful tenure in South Bend. Westbound trains yet another jumper, and Maddie Westbound, after a bit of a quiet second quarter, is back to being a prominent scorer for the Irish here in the second half. And all go looking for steal number five, just couldn't come up with it. Marshall finds it, then takes a spill and gets called for a travel. And Good to see her getting back up quickly. Last thing the Irish won or can afford right now is another injury and we see on that note, Coach Ivy dipping into her rotation a little bit deeper. Sarah Sernugel getting her first action of the night. Kickball stops the play here. Sernugo, a walk on to the Notre Dame team a couple of years ago. And 
And we'll pick up a rebound there on a three from Shields that caught nothing but air. And DeWolf with the bank shot from beyond the arc. Just how she drew it up. Well, why not? Everything has gone Notre Dame's way. Here we go again. 2 on 0 with Hidalgo, and she's going to take it herself. They get 24 on the night for Hannah Hidalgo, and a timeout called by the Leopards. Notre Dame on cruise control. Another steal and score has the Irish sitting pretty. Liberty Mutual customized my car insurance, and I saved hundreds with the money. Irish on their way to their seventh straight victory tonight. You get a look at what's on store for them coming up. As we mentioned, the two games left on this home stand, and then a 10-day break around the holidays before they start ACC play, and then two games on the road there, followed by a big one at home against number 24, North Carolina. Yeah, gotta love that matchup against Purdue. Next time out for Notre Dame, rematch of the 2001 National Championship that Neil Ivey won with Notre Dame. But this is a very backloaded schedule for Notre Dame as far as ACC play goes. You're going to get Louisville, Florida State, NC State back to back early on in February. Two of those games on the road, then BT and Louisville at home to end the regular season period transitioning into March. So it'll take a little while, but the schedule will get tough in a hurry for Notre Dame. And of course, Ivy's son Jaden went to Purdue before he made the leap to the NBA as well. So all kinds of connections there. Teresa Kiewet kicks it over to Antonoli. Desperation shot there, clanks off the side of the rim as Irish continue to do a stellar job defending the Lafayette star point guard. Two more from Hannah Hidalgo. She hits from just inside the arc. Hidalgo has hit 30 points once so far this year as Antonoli gets off the schneid with a much needed three. That was back in the season opener against South Carolina when she had 31. Maybe make a late push for that in this one. She's at 26. Just tied for her most since that performance. Two more there for Notre Dame, and it's a season high eight points for Becky Obimba on four of five shooting. It seems like every game right now, with the depth needed for Notre Dame, Neil Ivey is finding somebody that can contribute. Becky Obimba has taken that role tonight, eight points, four of five from the field. And that Marshall, 8.7 rebounds as well to follow up, which she's been doing as of late, so. Things can seem to point in the right direction for Notre Dame as far as filling the gaps. And the third stop in Obimba's collegiate journey began at Pepperdine, then went to TCU. And five double doubles a year ago. And tries to put herself in double figures there. Misses, but Marshall's there for the putback. Irish continue to dominate inside in this one. Marshall quietly having a really versatile game. 10 points, eight rebounds, five assists as well. And another block for Obimba as she hammers that one away from Bryn Beefert. She's just made it look really easy with that long reach tonight. And She's not even allowing the ball to leave the shooter's hand. Shot clock is down to two here. They get a good look, but off the mark from Teresa Kiewit. Sarah Sonugo leads the charge for the Irish. Sonugo looks for a soft spot, draws a foul. I love the reaction of that Notre Dame bench. You see Olivia Biles getting up on her feet. She's a proud favorite, a team favorite. Sarah Sanugo's an everybody favorite here in South Bend. And she'll get a chance to put her name on the score sheet and push Notre Dame over 90 here at the line. Irish have hit that mark four times already this year. Sanugo gets them there. Native of Westmont, Illinois. 
She goes two for two. Two of the best free throws we've seen all night. Yeah, we've seen the Irish struggle a little bit from the line at times tonight. Sir Nugle, nothing but net on both. This Irish team averaging 91.6 points a game right there once again. Adalgo hauls that one down. Springs Marshall rejected, but a foul. Hidalgo's ability to just collect rebounds in all areas of the court is key. I mean, she doesn't have the same size as a player like Obinma or Marshall or Kylie Watson, but just a smart player. Has that engine you talked about that never shuts off. And she always finds a way to be around the basketball, and that applies to rebounds as well. She's got six tonight. Averaging just over five a game. Marshall follows her Nuggles lean two for two. And this offensive outburst from Notre Dame after a bit of a sluggish start, Lafayette. Threw a lot at them in those opening moments and kept it closer much of the opening 20. Since then though, all Irish. Obimba adds a steal to her ledger. Using that size in all kinds of ways tonight. Good kick from Marshall. Three-pointer of Sarah Cernugel. And the Irish bench couldn't be happier. Uh, she did it once already this year against Northwestern and <laughs> Purcell Pavilion. The roof's gonna come off after that one. Pretty cool moment for the walk-on. Put on scholarship earlier this year by Neil Ivey and this Irish coaching staff. Tremendous journey for her as Notre Dame looks to wind this one out. 96 points was a slow start for the Irish, but you wouldn't alive, know it by the end. Yeah, came alive fast, man. Fans come to their feet here at Purcell Pavilion. Irish bench went and Sernula to pop another three. But she'll take the shot clock violation with a smile. And she's not the only one with a good look on her face tonight. As her name closes out another convincing victory. 96 to 42, our finals. The Irish win their seventh in a row.